Um, I want to say thank you uh, for the donation of this nice chair. It's, got a, it's a full chair, man. This is all right. That little one, I, uh, my, my, my backside was almost too big to sit on that thing, but here I'm in good shape. Uh, let's start from the reading of the God's Word found in the book of 2 Timothy chapter 2, verses 1 through 4. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verses 1 through 4. I'm reading from and teaching from the New, uh, New American Standard. If you have a King James, the wording will be just a little bit different, but we'll all end up in the same place together. 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 1 reads, uh, You therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. The things which you've heard from me in the presence of many witnesses, entrust these to faithful men who will also be able to teach others also. Suffer hardships with me as a good soldier of Christ Jesus. No soldier in active service entangles himself in the affairs of everyday life so that he may please the one who enlisted him as a soldier. Let's pray together. Father, speak to our hearts this morning. As we gather here on this Memorial Day, Lord, let us hear your voice and yours alone, and we ask it in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. you may be seated. Uh, I want to give a, give a big shout out before I get started real quick uh, to Betty Sue and Judy and Vicki for, uh, for taking all, all the uh, food basket or the uh, backpack for the schools all year long. Uh, give them a great big hand this morning. 300. 338 was delivered from the, uh, from us to the school. Now, I don't know what the, the number one total is, but I will tell you that the school system has told me that we are number two uh, in all out of all the churches in Harrison County. We're number two in giving to that backpack program. So there are a lot of bigger churches in the county, but we're number two, and I'm proud of that, and you should be proud of that as well. Thank you for giving. Now, for the summer, you don't need to bring any of that stuff for the backpack stuff, okay? So you don't have to do that. We'll pick that back up in the fall when school gets ready to start. And I'm going to say it right here. We've done 338 this year. I want to, let's do 500 next school year. How about that? Can you can all rise to that challenge? You think you can do it? 500. We're going to do 500 next school year. Judy, uh, Besu, y'all up to that? Vicky, you can help them and okay, all right. So we're, we're gonna shoot for 500. But you right now through the summer, uh, at least for this month, we need to bring sweet peas or just peas, Any pe canned peas. Okay, well, our canned peas sweet. Mm. Okay, grain peas in a can. Okay, and we'll get them to the food people. Memorial Day tomorrow. Originally known as Decoration Day is a federal holiday in the United States for honoring and uh, mourning the U.S. military personnel who died while serving uh, in the United States Armed Forces. From 1868 to 1970, it was observed on May the 30th. Since 1971, it's observed on the last Monday of the month of May. And so if you're here this morning, this is a day we recognize our fallen soldiers but I also want to recognize our men and women that wore the uniform at all. If you're here today and you wore the uniform of the United States military, would you please stand to be recognized? Thank you. 
Give Mr. Keen a big hand and say about that. They're heroes. They sacrificed their time, their own wants, and some of them had, uh, suffered their health. Maybe not right away, but later on from the causes of what they went through uh, to serve the United States of America. And by serving the United States of America, they served you and I. And today we gather here remember that all, all gave some and some gave all. It's been said and it is so true it's the veteran, not the reporter, who gave us freedom of speech. It's the veteran, not the poet, that give us the freedom of student. It's the veteran, not the reporter, that gave us freedom of the press. It's the veteran, not the poet, that gave us freedom of speech. It's the veteran, not the campus organizer, who gave us the freedom to assemble. It's the veteran, not the politician, who gave us the right to vote. It's the veteran and not this preacher who has given us the freedom of religion. So we think about this passage of Scripture found here in the book of Timothy. It's, a great, it's written by a man who was a veteran in a different army, in the army of the Lord. The Apostle Paul, he had fought many battles. These battles had been fought for Jesus Christ. And he no doubt bore scars uh, from these fights. He had been beaten, he had been whipped, he had been stoned throughout his years of service. The Apostle Paul preached for over 30 years before he was martyred at the hands of Nero, the Roman emperor. He was a veteran in the army of the Lord. And as he's near the end of his life in this particular passage of Scripture, he wanted to pass on uh, some advice down to a young Timothy, a young recruit in the army of the Lord, a young soldier preparing for battle. And he says to him, Timothy, in verse 1 here, Therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Jesus Christ. The things which you have heard from me in the presence of many witnesses, entrust these to faithful men who will also be able to teach others. Suffer hardships with me. As a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No soldier in active service entangles himself in the affairs of everyday life. He's worried about one thing, and that is completing the mission that the commander has given him. Don't entangle yourselves with the things of this world. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to say this about this particular passage of Scripture. There's a good piece of advice for all of us. If you're here today and you're trying your best to serve the Lord Jesus Christ, you're trying to be a faithful Christian, you're trying your best to honor God and do the right things, 
you have to make a decision that we cannot get tangled up in what everybody else is doing. Sometimes we get this, um, it's a, I, I just found out that this terminology, I didn't, I didn't know what it meant, but it's called mofo. Has anybody ever heard mofo? Or FOMO, 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 sorry. Burger County, FOMO, the fear of missing out. Sorry, where else you gonna get this stuff, right? Go home, take, go, go out here today and tell them what your preacher talked about this morning. Yeah, yeah, we'll delete that off of there. I try. The fear of missing out. And I think a lot of times for us, we're, we look at the world and we're fearful of that we're going to miss out something that they got going on. We're going to miss out some fun that they're having. But can I tell you with honesty and all my heart this morning, you're not missing out on anything that they're dealing with. They're dealing with, with uh, struggles. They don't have peace. They don't have, they don't have comfort. They don't have the hope of, of the Holy Spirit. They don't have any of that. And while they may look like they're happy and have momentary joy, we realize that without Christ, we don't have a future. We don't have a hope. And so we as soldiers in the army of God must focus our, our minds and our hearts up on the things of God and the Word of God so that at the end of the day, we can please God himself. Some of you uh, are uh, young soldiers in the army of the Lord. Uh, you, uh, you just got saved. You just came into the church. You could get some great advice from some of the old veterans in this room that have served the Lord for many years. Men and women who have served the Lord many years and some probably can tell you about some hard times they experienced serving Jesus. But I bet every one of them, that have, every one of you that have been here and you've served Jesus for years and years and years, I bet you could say this, that as you look back on your life in a relationship with Jesus Christ, you would look back and say uh, the words of an old gospel song, I wouldn't take nothing for my journey now. Can I get an amen on that? Amen. So what does Paul tell Timothy? If he's going to be a soldier in the Lord's army, there's some things that he needs to know. And number one, he tells Timothy, first of all, to be strong. If we go back to the beginning of this, uh, of this verse uh, here, he says, uh, Therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Jesus Christ. Notice that he does not tell him to be strong in physical strength. That, no doubt, is a requirement being in the U.S. military. But it's not an requirement for being in the army of God. Paul tells Timothy here to be strong in what? What does he say? Be strong in the grace that is in Jesus Christ. Great. What is grace? Have you ever thought about that for just a minute? Grace is the unmerited favor of God. We sing about how amazing grace really is. God's grace. Remember we sang that song? Grace, grace, God's grace, grace that will pardon and free from sin. I don't know the rest of it, but that we sing that song. God's grace, His unmerited favor is without is with us today and through every stage of our lives. Through every battle we face, God's grace is there. Through every trial that comes along, God's grace is there. Through every temptation that crosses our path, God's grace is there for the asking. Just like every soldier needs the backing and support of the U.S. government, we as Christians fighting in the army of the Lord have the backing of God who created the universe. Ladies and gentlemen, you're not in this battle alone. I don't know what battle you're going through this morning. I don't know what trial that you're in the middle of. I don't know what thing is weighing on you hard today. Maybe you're going through a physical battle. Uh, maybe like I am, going through the battle with my back and my health. Maybe you're here today and you're going through a battle with your finances. Maybe you're here today and you're going through a battle in your marriage or in your relationship. I'm telling you now, and I want you to listen to me clearly. You are not in this battle by yourself. 
All your friends may have left you. All the listening ears may have turned away. All the people who said they would always be there may have not forgotten how to get to your house. But I'm going to promise you today that there is one that is still there. He is still on his throne. He still has a listening ear. He still wants to be involved in your life. He still wants to have a part of what's going on. He will give you grace and strength to get through whatever you're facing. And that himself is Jesus Christ who has promised that he would be closer than any friend. He would be closer than any brother. He promised he would never leave us nor forsake us. In every battle we face, God has promised to be with us every step of the way. Amen. We have grace. Paul tells Timothy to be strong in that unmerited favor. See what happens, listen to me carefully, what happens a lot of times is we get going to church and we get to serving God and we think that we've been taught by people that don't know what they're talking about that, oh, go to church and everything will be just great. Go to church and get saved and your life will be so much better. Now, your eternal life will be so much better when you come to God, you know Him, but that doesn't mean your life is going to get better. Jesus is, you've heard me say this, He's told over and over, in this world we will have trouble. He doesn't deliver us from trouble in this life. What He does is He gives us His grace to get through anything we face. He will walk with us and help us and guide us and be there. He's a friend to cry out to in the middle of the night. He's that, that ear to chew when you need somebody to talk to. He is the person that will, and when everybody else says, I'll be there, he's the one who actually shows up. You stand strong in that. You stand firm in your belief in Jesus Christ. When the trouble comes, and it will, every one of you will be persecuted for following your faith. You will be, the, the devil will come after you for attending church today. Every time you go through those things, you square your shoulders back and you remind yourself this. If you're born again, you are a child of the living God. You've been redeemed and purchased by the blood of the Lamb. And the devil may come against you, but you belong to the Creator of the world. You belong to the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And there is no way, the Bible says, that no way that the devil can pluck you out of the so you hold on and you square your shoulders back and say this, I will not cave in and I will not quit. I've come too far to look back. I will hold on to God's unchanging hand and no matter what I face, no matter what I go through, no matter what the challenges are in my life, I will trust Jesus Christ through them all. Amen. Stand strong. After all, that's what a soldier does got no choices to turn back when you're on the battlefield. you got no choices to turn back when you're in the heat of the moment. If you turn back on the U.S. government, they call you a deserter. You can go to prison for the rest of your life if you desert the U.S. military. And yet we all the time walk away from God when the going gets tough. Don't quit. You're going to have hardships and trials. You're going to have problems. But this army is eternal. And this army has a king who cannot be conquered. And this army will win. No matter what they put you through here on this planet, if you know Jesus Christ, you win. Let me say that one more time. If whatever they put you through on this plague, no matter how much hell they give you, no matter how much trouble you go through, no matter how hard it gets, if you know Jesus, in the end, you win. Amen. Stand strong. Don't give up. Don't cave in. Don't quit. When they make fun of you for going to church on Sunday, you laugh it off and keep on trucking. When they laugh at you because you don't do the things that you used to do. Well, what happened to you? Did you get religion? No, I didn't get religion. I found a man who loves me like no other man has ever loved me before. I found a friend who will never desert me or leave me. 
when, they, when, when you have to go through obstacles, when you have to go through challenges, and you will do that in your relationships, at work, in everything you can imagine, you hold your head up high and you make this commitment. He died for me, so I will live for him. So he tells us to be strong. Secondly, a soldier needs to be committed. Now, commit can mean several ways, but let's look at what Paul says here. Uh, Paul uses this word as this, to give as a trust to someone. When you read through the book of 1 and 2 Timothy, you'll see all over the, the, you can see all the advice, the information, the teachings, and most importantly, the love that Paul had for Timothy. He thought of Timothy as a son. He probably longed for days when he could sit down with Timothy on the streets of gold and just talk. And who knows, maybe they're up there right now doing exactly that. But here in the short term, Paul uh, had uh, left uh, on this earth, uh, for the short time Paul had left on this earth, he wanted to pass, uh, to, uh, wanted to commit to Timothy things that he had learned and that he wanted Timothy to pass it on. Think about this for just a minute. This year, in a few months, I'll be 50 years old in November. 200 years ago, 50-year-old guy was really old. But today, we call him what? Middle-aged, right? 200 years ago, he would probably have lived most of his life at 50. I could have a lot of years left. I could have not had but a few. I could die today. Only God knows that. But I want to tell you something. The things that I've learned in these last 50 years, I want to pass them on to you. That's why I keep preaching. That's why I keep hanging in here. I can quit. And, and, and sometimes the pain in the back of my mind tells me, give up and quit, kid. They can do better without, without you. They can find somebody else. They don't, after all, you ain't got nothing left to tell them. But then I reminded that God has gifted me with a gift that he gave me. It took me a lot of years to realize that, that he had given me a gift. And I quit taking for granted this ability he gave me to preach. And now I want to commit myself to you. That I will commit to you to teach you the word of God with simplicity and understanding. What's that mean? It means I'm committing to you that I will teach you this Bible in a way that you can understand it and apply it to your life. That you can take this book and, and read it and I'll teach it to you and that you understand. We're not talking about eschatology or soteriology or all the ologies that you can get from the seminary. I'm coming to teach you plainly. And sometimes when I talk plainly, I get things messed up like you saw just a few minutes ago. I don't claim to be the brightest tool in the shed, the sharpest tool in the shed, the, the best looking of all the preachers, the most talented of all preachers, the best voice of all preachers. I'm just somebody who found Jesus Christ, or better yet, I'm somebody that Jesus Christ found who give me a gift to be able to do what I'm doing, and I'm going to teach you as simply as I can how to apply the Word of God because I am convinced beyond a shadow of a doubt that if you take this book and do what it says, the Word of God works if, work. if you work it. And how are you going to work it? How are you going to put it to work in your life if you don't understand what it says? And so some preachers are more interested in impressing you with a vast vocabulary that talks about all the things in the academic world. And I'm more impressed about you understanding what this says so that when you understand what it says and do what it says, it will transform your life. And in the middle of that, sometimes I put my foot in my mouth. Now, I messed up a minute ago, and I'm sitting over here trying to think when y'all were laughing at me. I don't even know what I said. I don't know what I said, what that means. But I take it that it wasn't the, probably wasn't the right thing to say in church, was it? Yeah. So what do y'all tell me later what it was I said? Because I have no idea what those initials stand for. Uh, again, you take it out of there and say, let me tell you what our preacher talked about. And if you want to get people to come to church, you go tell them that one. Yeah. How about Sunday night? Sunday. Oh, 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 oh. 
Yes. Yes, I got pointed out a couple Sunday nights ago. I put a, a city with a with a S I T. S I T T. S I D. That's not what I said. It's just leave it there. Again, I'm not the most eloquent, but I am trying to help you. And here's why I want to help you, so that you can put it to work in your life and see that it works. Then you, what he says. Now look at what he says to Timothy. All right. He says, the things which you have heard from me in the presence of many witnesses. Okay, look at that. Timothy, what you've heard me tell you, that's what he's saying. What you've heard me tell you, this is what I want you to do. Tell this no, to faithful men. When the, the word entrust just simply means tell them. Tell faithful men who will also be able to do what? Yeah. Teach others. See, that's what you're that's what I'm doing to you. I'm entrusting you with the word of God in simple terms. So that you can apply it to your life and watch it change your life. But then you don't just keep it to yourself. You take that out to the, uh, to the other people and you do something with it. You teach them what you've been taught and how it works in your life. And how God blesses you. And how God changes you. The worst thing in the world we can do is come to church on Sunday, hear the word of God, and then the rest of the week be quiet about it. You need to be telling other people that you, you've got the solution to their problems. You've got the answer to what's going on in their life if they would simply listen to you, okay? And you're not telling them from your wisdom. You're not telling them from your smarts. You're telling them from the Word of God how God will work in your life if you will listen to His Word, if you will do what it says, the third thing we need to do this morning is, as good soldiers, is we have to endure. We have to endure. Verse 3, if you go back and look at that, he says, endure or suffer hardships with me. Now look here, again, I'm going to tell you, you will have trouble. Young ladies, if you're here today without your husband, he may get upset about you going to church. I remember when my dad was not a Christian, and we would go out on Sunday drives. And when it came time to go back to church on Sunday night, we'd be in Flemingsburg or, or Maysville or somewhere like that. And Mom would say, you got go, to go, start heading home. And Dad would get mad. You remember that? Drive, oh, her there. Get back to Shawland. So Mom could go to church. But she endured. And eventually what happened? Dad comes to church and Dad gets saved, becomes a deacon in the church. And it serves from that day since. Right? She had to endure those difficult moments with him. Uh, but enduring, he got saved. You have, Some of y'all may be catching grief for coming here this morning. Some of y'all may be catching hell at home because you know what? You need to be here. We got things to do around the house. And you just, you're spending my money and giving my money to the church and yada, yada, yada. Keep enduring. Suffer hardships with me. That means that we're going to go through some stuff. You're going to deal with persecution. Now, we're not dealing with the persecution that the rest of the world deals with. But you know what? They still pick on us. And they still make fun of us. And they still laugh at us because we do the things that we do. Endure that. Put up with it. Keep holding on. Don't cave in and quit because it gets hard. Endure hardships as a good soldier. Nobody said this was going to be easy. And if you were told that, you were lied to. This is a hard walk. This is a tough life to live, a Christian life. It's hard. But you know what? At the end of the hardness is eternal life. A place called heaven where there is no more sickness and there is no more pain. There is no more suffering. The things of this life. Where the city where there are streets of gold and gates of pearls and walls of jasper. Where Jesus Christ himself is waiting for us. It is worth the hardship to endure so that we can go to heaven. Military life can be really hard. But if you ask some of these veterans today, they'd say maybe the hardest thing they've ever done in their life is that. My dad and my uncle, my dad, my dad and my uncle went to Vietnam on the buddy system. They were promised that they could be together from boot camp through. 
Well, guess what the American government done to them? They said they lied to them. Can't be buddies. Be buddies for a little while, but when you go here, when we get over here, you're going here and you're going here. And so sometimes things happen to us that we're told that, you know, we're told one thing and another thing happens. You have to endure through that. Not everything's going to work out in your favor. Not everything's going to work out the way you want it. You keep fighting. We as soldiers of, of the cross may be called upon to endure hardships. Just as many of us, many have in the past. We are not unique. The ones that have come before us have endured hardships as well. Of all the disciples, John was the one to die a natural death. He still faced great persecution and exile while he was on the Isle of Patmos. Many missionaries today, I read a story today about, uh, yesterday about a missionary uh, in a foreign country that him and his wife, they were a beautiful young couple. And in this, this missionary field, I don't remember exactly, do y'all remember where they were at? Haiti. Haiti in, in Haiti, they were killed simply for sharing Jesus. Joe Scriven was a missionary from Ireland to Canada, working with the Ikoi Indians. He was joined by his fiancée, who was also from Ireland. Just before their wedding, she was killed. Joe buried her with his own hands in a broken heart. A year later, uh, in a letter to his mother, he reflected. Here's what he wrote to his mother a year after burying his wife. And all they were trying to do was serve Jesus. He wrote to his mother this. What a friend we have in Jesus, all our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. Have we trials and temptations? Is there trouble everywhere? We should never be discouraged. Because why? We take it to the Lord in prayer. And finally, this, this I, want to, I want to tell you this one last, one last thing. Is number four, stay focused. Stay focused. Verse four here, the old soldier gives the young soldier, Timothy, a piece of advice. He says this. He says, no soldier in active service entangles himself in the affairs of everyday life so that he may please the one who enlisted him as a soldier. What's he saying to Timothy here? He's saying to Timothy here, don't get distracted. Here's what happens to us a lot of times, ladies and gentlemen. We lose our focus. We look around to everybody else and see what they're going dealing with. We see what everybody else is. Well, they've got this and they're going through this and they're having a good time and they're, you know. No, you stay focused. Uh, you press towards. If we were to, uh, if we were to think for just a minute, uh, Paul says that he pressed towards the mark of the prize, the high calling of God. We're to keep focus. The goal has got to be the this goal has got to be the best advice that Timothy was given by Paul. Uh, just as an arm, a soldier in the army of the United States of America must be on guard against those things that would distract him or her from doing their job, we must as Christians be on guard against those that might come up to distract us from doing our job. Chapter four of the same book, Paul's alone in prison. He's getting ready to face the executioner's block. And in his time of need, the only person that was there for him was Luke. Paul says not to let the things of the world entangle you. Stay focused. Don't look back. You may say, well, you know, today I'm in church and my buddies are at the lake. Okay, they're at the lake. You can go after church and you'll still have time. You say, well, I can't come to church next Sunday. We're going on vacation. Go find you a place for an hour next week, wherever you're at, to worship God. You don't have to necessarily go to a church if you don't want to do that. But if you're at the mountain, set aside this time to look at God's creation. Read a passage or two from God's Word and thank God for what He's done to you. You're at the ocean. You don't have to, if you don't want to go to a church at the beach, sit on the ocean side in, in, the, uh, in the sand. Look at God's creation and give Him thanks for all He's done for you. Maybe today you'll go sit at a, a, a grave of a loved one who's gone on. Don't think about the bad times because those are the times that God used to transition us into glory. 
If you go to a graveside of somebody who was born again, you go and you sit and you think about all the good times and all the wisdom and all the things that you shared together and be reminded that eventually when your time comes, where they are on the streets of gold, if you'll retain yourself in Jesus Christ, you'll follow him, that where they are, you can be also. You got to keep working this thing, man. But don't give up. Don't quit. You've come too far to turn back. You're in an army, and God's expecting you to show up and to pull your part. It's going to be challenging, and it's going to get hard. There's going to be days that you're going to have sweat, blood, and tears. But you remember what happened that day 2,000 years ago on a cross. The Savior of the world who was born of a virgin and was loved by many throughout his career when he fed the 5,000, he fed the 4,000, and when he caused blinded eyes to see, they all loved him. But at the end, they all turned against him. And when he's on that cross, the very people that cheered him, when he was on that cross, they hollered, crucify, crucify, crucify. Jesus from his cross, the Bible says, could have called down a legion of 10,000 angels and destroyed everything. But on that cross, when they're screaming for this man who had done no wrong, they were screaming, crucify. He looks out at the crowd and he says these words, Father, forgive them. For they know not what they do. I don't know about you, but it's somebody I think I want to follow. Who was strong enough in his weakest moment to still care for other people. He could have sent them all to hell if he wanted to. But you know what he did? He completed his death his burial, and his resurrection so that the very people that were hollering for him to die could have eternal life. Think about that one for a minute. Do you know anybody else that would do that? Do you know any other uh, uh, creator that would do that? Do you know any other prophet? Mohammed wouldn't have done that. But Jesus did. So it's worthy. He is worthy of our commitment. He's worthy of our following. He's worthy of our praise. You're not missing anything. Don't go back to it. Not missing anything. You keep moving forward following Jesus Christ. Let's stand our feet. Every head bowed and right approach across the room this morning. We gather in this room today to lift up the Lord. We remember the ones that have gone on before us as, as we think about Memorial Day. So for a minute, I just want you to pause right where you're at. Think about your loved ones that have gone on before you and just say, God, thank you for the time we've had together. And make a commitment this day. If your loved one was in Christ and they've gone on to heaven, make a commitment to yourself and to God this day that I will get to heaven. I will follow Jesus. And I will see them again someday. You're in this room this morning. You're here today and you've never followed Jesus Christ. You've never placed your faith and trust in Him. You've never asked Him to come in your heart to be your Savior and your Lord. Today, would you consider that? That he loved you enough that he died on a cross to give you freedom and forgiveness. You're here today and with every head bowed, every eye closed, you're in the room this morning. And you've never made that faith in public in Jesus. You've never done it. You've never placed your faith and trust in him. You've never come forward and said, preacher, I want to be saved. You've never done any of that. And you want to today. Would you just slip your hand up right back down? I just want to pray for you. Anybody at all? need to be saved. You're here today and maybe today you've wavered in your commitment. You're a Christian, but 
but it's easy to get discouraged and give up and quit. Today, I want to encourage you to come before the Lord and say, God, give me the strength. There's nothing back there for me. Help me continue to move forward in my walk with you. Father, all around the room is followers of Jesus. We all go through struggles. And maybe I'm talking to people right now that are going through the hardest times of their life. Things that they never thought would happen to them is happening to them. A betrayal of a friend or a, or a family member. Lord, financial situations that are struggling and that are stifling their lives. Pains and hurts of loss that you couldn't even imagine five years ago or a year ago at that. Father, remind each one today that you are ever present with them, that you love them, and if you they will let you, you will walk with them every step of the way. But they have to trust you. They have to be willing to talk to you and let you in. So, Father, speak to all of our hearts this morning. Let us hear your voice. Let us commit today to follow Jesus Christ. And it's in his name we pray. Every head bowed, every eye closed. The altar is open if you want to come and pray. If you need to be born again or join the church, would you come and sit on the pew up here where I sat in the morning? Right beside Charlie. And I'll come over and talk to you and get you through joining the church or rededicating your life or whatever you need to do.